All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Today we're going to be making a three inch purge plug for TIG welding. Well, I guess you can use it for any welding, but I use it for TIG welding. Um, I'm going to show you guys two ways to make it. I'm going to show you a printable one that you can just print directly out of flexible material like TPU. And then I'm going to show you how to make a little mold to make one out of like high temperature silicone. So let's get started. And today I'll be using Fusion 360. And there are other programs that you can use. Um, this is a paid program. Um, there are other ones that are free. Um, so just use whatever you like. I think a lot of the tools up here in the toolbar are like quite the same. So a lot of this should carry over. If not so similar, you should be able to just go right through it. So first things first, let's get started by creating a sketch. And you can select any of the planes here. Um, it's just showing you all of them, but just start with any of them. And we're going to go ahead and use a center diameter circle here. And I know that 3 inches converted to millimeters is 76.2 off the top of my head. So I'm going to go ahead and input that. And now we have our circle. And that is 3 inches. So next, I want to take this circle and make an offset using this offset tool. So I want to offset it by, I don't know, um, let's do 12, negative 12, so it goes inside the 3 inch hole. So, that's our sketch. Let's go ahead and finish. And now, we want to move this center one outwards a little bit. So, go ahead and press M on your keyboard, and you would select any of these arrows for this I'm gonna select this one and normally it would move but right now because I created an offset of the 3 inch one it's constrained so to it so we're gonna to have to delete that constraint so just go ahead and click OK and then the constraint is that little guy right here so click on it press delete and now we can move forward go ahead and press the circle and select M on your keyboard again and let's bring it down I don't know, 20 millimeters. Um, I think that'll be fine. Let's press OK. And rotate it. So what we're going to do next is called a loft. So we're going to go here to create. Select loft. And we'll select our first surface. And then our second surface. Go ahead and press OK. And there's our purge plug. So you can save it right now. Go here to the bodies. So you can save as an STL right here. And you can print that out of TPU right now, which I have done and it does work if you are a little bit further, I would say like a foot or more from the heat. Um, but TPU does print you know, at a pretty high temperature. So you really can do quite a bit with the printable one. But I'm gonna show you the next step to creating the injection uh, silicone mold one, which will make it a little more flexible uh, to fit like more, uh, you know, more pipes. Um, and maybe if the pipe has like a small uh, uh, change in diameter or something, it'll kind of hug in there a little bit better than the TPU one will. Okay, so to make this an injection style mold, we need to use this model as a negative. So we're going to use this to cut out the insides of another square. So you can use this uh, cube up here to, you know, to move it around and stuff like that. So what we want to do is create another sketch. We can select this surface here and we want to create a rectangle. So let's do that here. And we'll just bring it to something like this. And 
and that looks pretty good. And one problem here is that this circular face is within our square, so you can see it's gonna, if I just try to extrude it like that, it's just gonna extrude that shape. So I wanna move this. So we need to select those lines, these sketch lines which form the square, and we wanna bring them so let's just move it like 10 millimeters just to get it off of there so you can see now that we have like a full square. So let's go ahead and finish the sketch and what we want to do now is extrude this outwards. So here the direction I'm going to choose symmetric so it just goes out both ways. You can see that. And then I'm going to select new body here. I'm going to press OK. And now I can't see the, the model of the purge plug anymore. So what we need to do is select it in here. Press M and then now we can move it more centered. That looks pretty good. So let's change the opacity of this by right clicking. Go to opacity control. We'll do 50% so we can see our model that's inside there. So what we want to do next is actually split it. So we're going to go to modify, split body, select the body first, which is the square, and then the splitting tool. Now we can't go, we can't select through the body of, uh, you know, the cube. So we're going to select body one here. And you can see now that it's red in there and that's what it's going to cut out. So go ahead and press OK. And now we can see that we have that cut out. So we can pretty much just uh, hide uh, body one, which is the initial model of the purge plug by clicking the eye there. And we want to create one more sketch. And we, all we want to do is create a line. So you can either press L on your keyboard or go to the tools and select line. And I'm just looking for the center. And if you just kind of go around this edge, it'll find it for you right there. So we'll go ahead and bring it up. And there's our line. Go ahead and finish the sketch and we're going to split this body one more time but this time the splitting tool will be this line and you'll notice that that's how it's going to cut it so go ahead and press ok and now we can select this body and we can move it I'll change our opacity control back to 100%. And you can see here that we have a purge plug. So next, what we want to do now is create something to align it. So what we're going to do is create one more sketch and we can create a center diameter circle here and let's make that 8.1 millimeters we'll make another one 8.1 And this time, what we're going to do is extrude those, except we'll cut here in the operation. We're going to drag it all the way through. And you can see it'll cut a hole through this one as well in the same location. Go ahead and press OK. And you can see we have our holes. So we're going to use those for alignment. 
now what we want to do is I'm going to align these faces back up by clicking here and here. You can see it goes right in. And now I want to come to the top of the model. We're going to make a hole. So we need to create our final sketch. We're going to make a center diameter circle. And let's make this... Um, we'll make this 10 millimeters. And now what we want to do is extrude that. You'll have to select both because it's going off of the split here. We're just going to take it all the way down. So if you see now, now we have a perfect hole going right in there. And that's where we're going to pour the silicone. So for our last and final step, I'm going to create a small chamfer here on this edge and this edge. And that's just going to help in pouring it and <clears throat> catching excess material. So we'll pretty much get it as small as as far down as we can get it in here. It looks like it might be a little bit too far because I see it distorting the circle here. So let's go ahead and do 14 millimeters and it looks like the circle is complete. And now what we have is a plastic injection style mold that we can pour silicone into, let it dry, and we'll have a purge plug. So I'm going to print this up and let's go from there. All right, so the mold just started. We're working on the first layer on the printer right now. I just brought this to show this is printed in TPU. So this is a completed TPU uh, perch plug. And I have used this, um, you know, like I say, uh, as far from the heat source as possible. But um, you can see some layer lines and stuff in here, but this is pretty much what we'll end up with, but in a you know, silicone form, a little more flexible than, than this. This is a little bit more like a hockey puck, I would say. alignment pins will clamp it and then when we're done we're gonna split it and we'll have that we're gonna have to cut this off this little piece when we're uh, when we're done but that's all that'll be on there so next I'm gonna need to sand this surface to make sure they're both nice and flat I'm not sure if you can see here but there is a small gap in there, so we're gonna to need to close that up as tight as we can so we don't get any leakage, and that's what they call flashing. So we're gonna to try to get our cleanest part straight out of the mold. This took about, what did it take? 14 hours, 19 minutes. Quite a while. Um, this mold is probably quite 
uh, quite a bit thicker than it needs to be. Um, but this will be nice and durable for to be used many times over. So I'm pretty happy with the result. So I'm going to go sand it now. And what I'm looking for here is you can see there's a change in the circle here versus everything here that's been sanded and I want to sand just to this circle right here otherwise it's going to leak out to this sanded area so I want it to be sealed all the way into this edge I first started with a 320 grit and then finished with a 600. Not wet, just dry both times. But this is our finished product. So the next step is to spray it. Um, usually I use like Pam, but I just have this like generic cooking spray. So I'm gonna use that this time. Probably that real nice little light coat is probably plenty. And I don't think uh, that silicone needs that much um, mold release anywhere. So we can just wipe it off of here. Off of the meeting surface. And then I have a couple bolts where I have grinded down the uh, the threads because when they roll the threads, these threads were rolled on a machine like this, and it makes the threads a little bit larger than the shank or the shaft here. So I had to just grind that down a little bit to fit. So now I'm just gonna put these together, put my alignment bolts in. And it's not perfect, I mean there's a little bit of movement, but we can just make do with that in the vise. We don't need to clamp it a crazy amount because we've already sanded it. So it's relatively flat already. So just kind of give it a little bit eyeball alignment, I guess. So I can see it's kind of like wanting to not clamp the whole thing. But I want to make sure it does. feels pretty good. So here I have my two-part silicone. So I'm going to mix this up at a one-to-one -one ratio. Then I have a little bit of dye. I'll be using red. And I'm just going to pour it in with this cup.
it's just barely filled. You can see just to the end, some of the last little bit of bubbles are escaping. So that level will drop a little bit more, but I do suspect that it will stay within, uh, within that little nine millimeter hole that I made in the design. So let's sit th let this sit for 40 minutes and see what happens. 40 minutes, I kind of went like this and it seems like it's all pretty dry. I mean, at least up here, I can't really say for the bottom. So let's see what we got. I don't know if it's gonna be hard to split or not. I don't know if that's some of the oils from the spray, but I'm just going to continue with the removal. Alright, so it looks like we got some dye but otherwise not too bad is a this is where I poured it in so we're gonna need to cut that off probably with a razor blade I'm just gonna let it sit a little bit longer because you can see it's still not perfect but yeah I think that worked out I think this will work perfectly fine for a perch plug just go ahead and let this dry a little bit longer tighter. Almost can't even get it apart. Ooh. Okay, so it's still drying, you can see. So I'm actually I'm going to let this one dry some more. But yeah, you can see you know, that's where I added it. But it's just sitting in there. Here's the red one that was sitting like this. And then it had a little air bubble right there. But all in all, I think these are going to be pretty usable. Well, I'm pretty happy with the results, guys. Here's the, here's the red one. Uh, here's the blue one. The blue one I let sit uh, for pretty much twice the uh, the amount of curing time and it seemed to work out a little bit better. And then here is the printed one that prints directly off the print bed right here. These all work. Um, this one conforms to you know differences in shape a little bit better than this one. You can see how much sturdier this one is and I really am squeezing it. So what I'll show you here is I have a two and a half inch pipe and a three inch pipe. So this one easily fits into the two and a half inch pipe even though it's my three inch purge plug. Meanwhile the printed one will not, it's just too sturdy. And then here I have a three inch pipe that I can put the purge plug into. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Hopefully that this hopefully this is a good solution for some of you fellas out there with uh, welders and 3D printers and uh, even if you just want to get started on Fusion 360, hopefully this helps you out.